Good morning, my name is Debbie Harris. Sorry for the slight delay in starting, it just shows we're live. I'm the founder of Autumner and I want to thank you so much for joining me, slightly belatedly, on this beginner's guide to finding elderly care. Say a quick hello if you haven't already on the live chat so that we know you're online for the prize draw at the end. So what we're going to cover today is, firstly, who has to pay for their own elderly care? What are the three main types of care available to you? And then the four key things you should consider when deciding which of these care options are right for you. If at any point you have a question, just type it into the chat box and we'll do our best to answer it during the talk. But if not, I promise you, we will follow it up afterwards. And to reward at least one of you for our delayed start and for you listening to me this morning, uh, we'll have our prize draw for the £250 John Lewis vouchers at about 10 to 11. So, very quickly, you may be wondering, what are my qualifications to advise you? Well, quite simply, I've been doing this for a very long time and I have a passion for it. This is me back in 2010 and I've run a care finding service for private clients for over 12 years. And we set up Autumna because the information we needed to carry out care searches just couldn't be found online in an easy to navigate, easy to compare way. I figured if I couldn't find it, neither could you. So we launched Autumna and we're really getting there and it's become really clear with the pandemic that quality online information has become crucial. However, we also know it's important to be able to speak to somebody. So we also run a telephone advice line. And the most common phrase we hear from our callers is, I don't know what to do. I've never had to look for care before. And it's not surprising. Most people don't want to think about growing old and they certainly don't want to worry about social care until they really have to. Often when they're in a crisis, when mum or dad has had a fall or they're becoming confused and they're really not coping on their own anymore. And then of course, they need to find a solution fast. The thing is, as with anything, the choices you make are so much better if you do know what to do and you have the information you need to hand. And that's what this talk will help you with. We will take you through the first steps of identifying your care options, what support those options give you, where to look for legal and financial advice, and practical support and advice on the logistics of moving into a care home. And of course, any questions you have throughout this webinar, you can ask in the chat box. Before I start with who has to pay for their own elderly care, I want to give you some statistics. Set the scene if you like. There are around 415,000 elderly people living in care homes. There are around 13,000 care homes for the elderly. Approximately 820,000 people have home care of one form or another. Around 60% are self-funding their care home fees and 90% are self-funding their live-in care fees, whereas only 30% fund their own home care. Now we have set the scene who has to pay for their own care. But essentially in England, if you live alone and are looking for a care home, if you have assets, including your house, of more than £23,250, then you'll be paying for your own care. You are what's known as a self-funder or private payer. There are some exceptions and there are some non-means tested benefits you may be entitled to, but this is a complex subject. So if you have specific questions or are outside England, please ask them in the chat box. We have experts on hand to answer them for you. For the purposes of this morning, we're going to assume you're paying for your own care. So, what are the three main care choices available to you and what are the differences between them? Your three options are home care, live-in care or a care home. You might also want to consider retirement living, you know, for example, some of the McCarthy and Stone developments or inspired retirement villages. 
We haven't specifically included them today, but if you want some information and guidance, head to the chat box. So let's get started with home care first. Home care agencies provide support in your own home. A carer will visit you and then they will leave. How often is entirely up to you, your needs and your budget. Home care includes everything from companionship and somebody helping you with your shopping to personal care, help with washing and dressing. And they can also provide nursing care. You can employ a home care agency for a short period as respite or a temporary break or for a long term home care. The big benefit of home care is that you stay in your own home and it's flexible. You can have as much or as little care as you need. So how does that differ from live-in care? Well, live-in care, somebody is living with you in your own house. Live-in care can work especially well and can be very cost effective if you're a couple and you both need some sort of care and support. Live-in care agencies can provide a range of care similar to home care. So that's companionship, personal care, to nursing care, and they can also provide respite care. One crucial difference, of course, is that there is a carer in the house overnight. So if anything goes wrong, there's always someone on hand, and this can be hugely reassuring for families. You will, of course, need a spare bedroom for the carer to sleep in. And bear in mind, both home care and live-in care carry a cost of the care, plus you're still running your own home with all of those associated costs. So that brings us on to option number three, care homes or residential care. And perhaps we ought to deal with the elephant in the room straight away here, the negative media reports associated with care homes and coronavirus. The thing is, we give great care isn't a news story. The media is only interested when it goes wrong. And whilst we are all aware of the terrible effects the virus had on care homes at the start of the pandemic, there is a case now for saying that actually care homes could be some of the safest places to be if you're elderly. And safety after all is fundamental in any decision about elderly care. Now you can search for safe care homes on Autumna and this will give you information about the measures care homes are taking to keep their residents and their staff safe. So with a care home you live full time in the home. Unlike home care or live-in care all of your costs are included in the price. So that's food, utilities, laundry, medicine and of course care. There is somebody on hand 24 seven to support you and the home will have the equipment and the space to support whatever your needs are. And that's something to consider if you're trying to stay at home. However, the big advantage of a care home is the social engagement. There are other people and activities to interact with. One of my first ever private clients was a chap who lived on his own in Dover. He had no family to speak of, just a nephew who lived at the other end of the country. The sclerosis in his back had got to a point where he couldn't reach the taps in his shower, so he was washing himself in the kitchen sink. He never went out because he couldn't physically get down the step. He was extremely lonely and he was relying on Meals on Wheels for his food. He was an intelligent man. He traveled the world in the Merchant Navy, but was reluctant to consider a care home and couldn't see how he could physically manage the move on his own. We found him a place in a beautiful home overlooking the sea, of course, and within an hour of moving in, he'd had his first shower in four years. He quickly found a group of ladies who we dined with every night and regaled them with stories of his travels over a glass of red wine. In the first month he was there, he put on a stone in weight. You know, we often speak to families, sons and daughters, who feel terribly guilty if they can't look after their parents in their own home. Yet we see so many cases where mum or dad 
really flourish when they move into a care home. But moving into a care home is without doubt a big step and it is worth spending a few minutes on the two different types of care home. There are residential care homes and nursing homes. Both of these will support dementia care. The difference between residential and nursing care in brief is that a nursing home has nurses on site 24 seven. And it is also worth mentioning here that making a move into a care home can be logistically quite challenging, particularly if you don't live nearby. And we have an expert on the chat box who can answer any questions you might have around this. If you're not sure whether you want to take the big step of moving into a care home, you can consider respite care. Respite care is a short stay of usually between two to six weeks, often to give a carer a much needed break, but it's also a very good way to try before you buy. So those are your care options. Let's look at the four key points that will help you decide which of these options is right for you. Let me start by saying everybody is different. There is no right or wrong answer to this but this should just give you a guide. The number one is safety. Will the person be safe in their choice? For example, if they have dementia and are prone, for example, to take a walk and get lost, it might be safer for them to be in a care home. The care home here, for example, has been designed with curved corridors that always bring you back to where you started. This has been specifically designed for somebody with dementia. In another example, a recent call to our advice line was from a daughter who lived several hundred miles away from her mum. And her mum had been diagnosed with dementia three or four years earlier. Mum was deteriorating quite quickly, possibly because of the lockdown. We're hearing this a lot. She had carers coming in a few times a day, but her daughter was really worried about what was happening at night. We suggested either live-in care or a care home, not only to keep mum safe, but also to let her daughter sleep at night. Number two, isolation. We touched on it briefly, but coronavirus has highlighted fairly starkly that isolation can be very debilitating for people living alone and can exacerbate conditions, particularly dementia. As we've said, a more stimulating environment can definitely bring benefits and is something to take into consideration. Third one is cost. Consider the cost of your choice. Can you afford it? And if so, for how long? Having recently supported a family who'd run out of money and been asked to leave the care home her mum had lived in for two years, I can't emphasize enough how important this is. If you are asked to leave a care home because your funds have depleted, then you have chosen the wrong care home. Take financial advice, and this applies to live in care too. Annuities might be the best option if you're going into a care home, but equity release might enable you to stay in your own home and have 24 hour support. And finally, the future. Have you future proofed your choice? Again, the last thing you will want to do is find a care solution that works now, only to find you have to go through the whole process again, six to 12 months down the road. There is clear evidence, for example, with vascular dementia that care needs may become increasingly acute over time. So make sure any choices you make now can accommodate deteriorating illnesses. And briefly touching on the retirement village option again. All I would say is don't leave it too late. Consider a retirement village early and enjoy the community benefits they offer. We had a very sad case recently where by the time the purchase negotiations had run their course and the solicitors had done their thing, the lady in question had deteriorated to such an extent that she never actually picked up the keys to her apartment and instead had to find a place in a care home. So, to sum up these four points, it's safety first, then look at the social stimulation, thirdly, how much you can afford, 
and finally have an eye on the future. So we're nearly there. We've covered who qualifies as self-funding, what are the three main care options available to you, what are the four key considerations in weighing up these options. So now let's move on to the legal and the financial bits. It is really important with both of these to get your ducks in line. You need to have conversations with family, preferably before there is a crisis, to ensure everybody is in agreement. If we deal with the legal issues first, an LPA or lasting power of attorney is really important. If you lose mental capacity, someone will need to have the legal ability to act on your behalf. And this can be for your financial affairs and also your health and well-being. Without an LPA in place, important decisions can take much longer and become extremely costly because you have to go through the Court of Protection. If you have legal questions, jump on the chat box. We have an expert who can answer them for you. Now, paying for care. As I've said, taking advice early in the care search process can really benefit you. If you're considering a care home, for example, then understanding your financial situation will ensure you choose a care home within budget, or at least it will allow you to have a conversation with the home and you can discuss how long your funds will last. If you're considering live-in care, then you may want to look at equity release as a means of paying for the care and staying in your own home. We have financial experts for both care home fees and equity release on standby, so ask any questions in the chat box. So to sum up, I hope this has given you an overview of social care and the options available to you. And while COVID has had a catastrophic effect on many industries, we think it might have benefited families who are looking for care now. Providers are posting much more information online, which is making it much easier for you to research your care options. And a top tip here, check out the Facebook page of any provider you're considering using. This will give you weeks and months of visual evidence of exactly what they've been doing. And they have been busy. In the past, you might have had two or maybe three providers to consider, but now you can access detailed information that makes it easy to search seven, eight, nine, ten providers. And you can do that in the middle of the night. Trust me, many people do. I get an audible alert from the Autumna website, which I haven't yet worked out how to switch off. If you need help and want to discuss your individual family situation, don't forget you can still speak to us on the good old fashioned phone or via live chat on the website. So that's it. I really hope I've given you some useful pointers this morning and I want to thank you for tuning in. If you want to let us have any feedback on what topics our next webinar should cover, please do get in touch. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the draw. Rob, can I have the hat please? <laughs> thank you so much. And the person that has won the £250 John Lewis vouchers is Rowan Norton. And we will be sending those to you this afternoon, Rowan. Congratulations. Thanks, Rob. Thank you again. A recording of this webinar will shortly be available here on the YouTube channel. And please share it with anybody you think might benefit from it. We will be sending a recording to you by email as well. And just know you're not alone. We are care experts and we can advise and support you. And uh, you'll see my email address up on the screen. Do get in touch and we'll be on the live chat for a bit longer. Thanks very much.